What's up? Haven't done a morning coffee in a moment. Um, I had to change my dialysis day because of the incident that happened July the 21st with the, the whole, um, sometimes even hard for me to get the words out because I'm still in shock that it happened. You know, someone literally putting, pulling out a gun on me um, July 21st. And um, anyway, I'm here. Um, and don't worry, I'll move it because I know some of you don't like the sight of seeing this blood, um, you know, and all that, or these needles stuck in my arm. Some of you, it probably takes you out and like, wow. But if you could take your mind off of that and focus in on the fact that I'm able to have a conversation with you and focus in on the fact, see, I'm talking about the gift that keeps on giving me. Focus in on the fact that I'm alive today. Focus in on the fact that there is a quality to my life that I would like to reserve as being sanctified. There is a quality to my life that regardless of what I'm going through, and even as I sit in this chair and and the needle, you know, sometimes it's hurting my arm because of the pulsating that it's doing, you know, the machine, and the blood being taken out. I just think it's incredibly amazing that blood can be taken out of my body in large doses and put right back into my body and going through a fake kidney um, so that it can cleanse me so that I can get up from here and live the next portion of my day. I, I just think it's incredibly amazing. So being that that's incredibly amazing, Sometimes it's so important that I will, that I just remember that life is going to happen whether I'm on this or not. I'm still going to have to pay bills. People are still going to tell me no. Um, I'm still going to feel rejected. I'm still going to feel joy. I'm going to feel elated about stuff. You know, life is going to happen. But this is the hand that has been dealt to me. So. I have to sit with the fact that I've been given an opportunity to play the hand out that's been dealt to me. So sometimes, even with people in my life, when they're going through stuff, and they want to moan, and they want to cry, and I'll say, well, if you had it like me, and then they get offended because they're like, well, you know, I don't have it like you, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going through my go-through. And I get that. I really do. Um, but I often say to myself, really, is it really that deep or that important? That bill's going to get paid. Then bill collectors can call till the cows come home. They can't get what you don't got. And I think the beautiful thing is that you're alive to be able to deal with it in whatever way you choose to deal with it. Um, for me, I have chosen in my life to just simply serve the Lord. You know, I'm not looking for to be famous. I'm not looking for no prestigious awards. I'm not even looking to be rewarded, you know. Um, and I do get excited about other people um, being elevated or just celebrating their lives to the point where they're just excited about being in their own skin. And you can see the glow because they're doing the work. I get excited about that. So, um, yeah, yeah. So I guess, you know, I need to get back to this morning coffee thing because it is, it is what helps me to connect with you. And essentially when I connect with you, I see a reflection in the mirror of myself. And it gives me the energy and the strength to go on. I have to accept the reality that just because my life was threatened on July the 21st and I may be feeling some post-traumatic stress behind it. I like the way somebody put it, a criminal had a conscience and didn't shoot the gun. So I pray for a miracle and the miracle is to shift my perception about my reality because sometimes I get so focused in on what my sense of reality is that I lose sight of the gems. I've 
getting ready to move I and mean, getting ready to move um, it's so funny getting ready to move and don't really have the money you know to do it so call it on family and all that kind of stuff and this isn't you know a plea of asking you to send me money either I'm, I'm just giving you my present circumstances and I can't be upset about that because I have been given money um, you know and thank God I got a, a people at my job that, that are principal but I've been given it and you know it just seems like nothing is ever enough so as I was thinking about all that I said well wait a minute I could be sitting down crying the blues and saying oh I need more and da 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 I need to be grateful that I can cry the blues how about that um, I need to be grateful that I can have this conversation with you sitting on this darn chair you know getting a treatment that is improving the quality of my life you know um, I don't know who this is going to touch I have no idea um, what morning coffee has done for many of you but I can say what you have done for me you have given me an opportunity to speak with you and be as transparent as I can at the moment because trust me I like getting down to the dirty nitty gritty but I've just come to realize in my 47 years of living that I just need to pray and let God like, do whatever he's going to do with me and um, I feel like there is a calling on my life and I miss that I miss that um, I miss that and I say what I mean by that is we live in an age now where everything is about performing um, this isn't me performing this is literally me sitting on a machine, arm hurting, can't wait to get out, body being drained. But I am tapping into the power within me. And I am speaking to you from as little heart as I got. And that's interesting because they say that the longer you stay on this machine, it's like your heart becomes like a rubber band. It expands and it goes down and expands. And even when I hear stuff like that, I just... I said, well, thank God I'm alive to, 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 to go through this. So I don't know who this inspires or touches, but that's the goal, you know, whatever. It's like a friend of mine used to say, I will to will, thy will. And if I can just stay in that vein, um, stay positive in my approach, and always pray for the miracle so that the perception can be shifted, so that whatever the work is that I've been called to do, and I was that's what I was talking about, being called. Remember back in the day, people used to be called to the ministry, and you would feel it, because it would be a connection. I don't care how you would live it either, because that had nothing to do with your calling. And what man or woman alive can say that you weren't called? I mean, they can talk all they want to, but the reality is, if you have met God in your experience, can't nobody take that gift away from you. Nobody. No religion. No man, no woman, no person that you've elevated to be all the way up here and forgot that they're just like you. You have no clue what you are born to do. And a calling isn't always, like when I think about ministry, ministry isn't always from a pulpit in a church. Ministry can be me doing what I'm doing right here. Ministry can be like these people around me. If you saw, if you saw, if you were here with me and you saw I can count the number of people in this room right now around here, and I can't show you them because it would be you know, against HIPAA laws. But if you just took a look around and seen all the sick people that I'm surrounded by, then instead of me looking at them like they're sick, I'm looking at them like, baby, you still got a moment. You got something to do. You recognize what it is to be called and walk into that. I'm lazy. I procrastinate. There are things that I know in my spirit I need to do. So I just ask you to continue to pray for me. And I'm just going to continue to do these morning coffees, you know, um, and continue to live until I die. And you have a blessed day. And if nobody told you that they love you, I love you. Peace.